Let's talk about where rates could be headed. With Matthew Dizak, head of uh, fixed income strategy for the, uh, for the chief investment officer at Merrill and Bank of America uh, private bank. Matt, I, I was actually talking about some of your uh, thoughts earlier. We're, if you look at where core inflation is, do we have rates about where they need to be right now within 50 basis points or so? I think it's a good call, Joe. I think we're definitely in that range of where we need to be. Obviously, monetary policy acts with a lag. So our belief is there's you know, probably two more hikes from here, but it takes a, a while, 18 months or so, for that 5% jump in rates to actually work its way through the economy. So whether it's two from here, whether it's one, whether it's three, that's kind of around the margins. Uh, we do believe that we're uh, very, very close to the end of the rate hike cycle here. That's what the yield curve is telling you. That's what leading economic indicators are telling you. That's what money supply growth is telling you. It's all a very consistent story. You, I think you pointed out that the inversion, when did the inversion hit about November, wasn't it? And how long does it take before we find out what the inversion is telling us? So, you know, we've seen the curve, different parts of the curve invert at different times. If we want to just focus on the Fed funds, the 10-year curve, that's kind of the best indicator. Uh, for more than 60 years now, it's never inverted without a recession happening, and a recession hasn't happened without its inverting. So it's a, it's a very good indicator. Uh, it inverted uh, first time back in November 2022. And then if you look back at the last seven recessions, it takes anywhere between nine and 18 months for the recession to hit. So if based on that time frame, that means the recession is either hitting the Q3 this year to sort of QT next year. And that's right where our range is. Our chief economist, Michael Gapin, uh, believes the recession starts in the first quarter of next year. And so that would be right in the historical range. That would be right down the middle of the fairway of when you expect the recession to occur, just based on the last seven recessions back to 1970. So we do believe in the yield curve. We do believe it's a great predictor and still a harbinger that the Fed is doing what it needs to do. It will get what it's looking for eventually, uh, slower economy, slower economic growth, uh, tighter, uh, slower uh, wage growth and employment, and bring inflation back down, not to target, but close to their target. Michael Gapin comes on. He's a very tall man. I think he can. I mean, he, <laughs> see, we're both right? very tall men. He, he can look out, like over and see things. As you, I, I, he's someone that you should probably listen to. So, what's going on with ADP? What's it mean about today? And and let's say that the, the this does confirm those ADP numbers. That doesn't sound like what you just described at all. What's taking so long for things to to bite? Is this a a head fake, or are there are there underlying things that we can't really see that that play into what what you're saying? Because it just seems like, you know, like we're still running really hot, at least in the labor market. I, I absolutely agree. Definitely, a lot of folks have been surprised at the resilience in the markets, particularly the labor markets. We think it's a not perfectly simple story, but a relatively simple story. Again, talking to Michael Gape and my my colleague and friend on the uh, Bank of America research side estimates, and it's hard to get this exactly right, but his estimate is there's still another 10 months of excess savings from all the payments the government put into the market, all the stimulus payments made uh, during COVID. And that's really what we're seeing here. We're seeing continued resilience because we have not seen a government spending program of this magnitude relative to GDP since World War II. This was a wartime level of fiscal spending which in World War II was also financed by the Fed. And shock, what happened? Massive government spending financed directly by the Fed, double-digit inflation. And we're seeing a replay of that now. So what we're seeing in the resilience here is just that. The amount of stimulus, the amount of payments for the market, there's still a lot of excess savings here. But again, inflation is a monster we know how to deal with. Tighten policy, keep it tight. The Fed's doing a much better job of talking hawkish not talking dovish and, and catching up. So continue doing that. Keep rates where they are. Move them a little bit higher. They'll eventually get what they're looking for, but it's going to take another six to nine months.